Another disturbing report out today on substandard care for older Americans at thousands of nursing homes nationwide. In America in the late 70s and the 80s, if people heard anything about nursing homes, it was about the serious gaps in the treatment and safety of residents. I burnt my behind. What did you burn it on? I burnt it on a hot water, a uh, hot pad. Yes. A heating pad? Yeah. While you were here at the facility? Yep. Yeah. A Senate report from the mid-80s describes some homes as more closely resembling 19th century asylums rather than modern health care facilities. The residents, vulnerable, often without family, mentally impaired. Bruce Vladek wrote the groundbreaking book, Unloving Care. To me, the real problem with nursing homes was that the average, the, which was minimally acceptable, wasn't very good. They were lifeless kind of places, though, and they were um, a, a large proportion of the people who lived there were depressed. A large portion of the people who worked there were depressed, and if you walked into one of them, it was pretty depressing. I mean, they were really warehouses. In some cases, they were being subjected to psychotropic uh, medicines, even strapped down to keep them quiet. The nursing home industry did not entirely disagree. The vast majority of nursing facilities were doing a pretty good job given the constraints under which they operated. Unfortunately, we had many too many who were doing a very bad job. We had many too many who were in fact, uh, quite frankly, making too much money off of the frail, vulnerable elderly. Against this background in 1981, then-President Ronald Reagan proposed deregulating the nursing home industry to relax safety and health standards, to invest business and consumers with more responsibility. A movement began to see what can we do to uh, require more of the nation's nursing homes, what can we do to empower families and, and patients in nursing homes in ways that uh, are good for patients, good for families, good for patient quality and safety. The idea alarmed many in Congress. With Medicaid supporting so many patients in long-term care and Medicare supporting short-term patients, lawmakers wanted to use that leverage to shake up the industry. You couldn't, in my judgment, have the federal government continue to pour money into it and not have any kind of accountability. And so you had this collision between the Reagan administration's effort to deregulate the industry and those who felt that there should be an increasing federal regulatory role to prevent the kind of abuses that were occurring involving the use of very substantial and growing amounts of federal funds. So Congress put the brakes on the administration's proposal and asked the Institute of Medicine to weigh in. The IOM study led by Vladek concluded that more, not less government oversight was needed. Well, most of the consumers in nursing home are capable of going to the bathroom by themselves. So the notion that they can sort of protect themselves in the marketplace for long-term care services is ludicrous on its face. The report jump-started the drive for government regulation. In 1987, health issues were not as partisan as they are now. And whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, no one would want to defend uh, standards at a nursing home that were below decent care. So we had Democrats and Republicans working together. Activists and the industry as well, a powerful coalition brought together by Elma Holder under the umbrella of the Campaign for Quality Care. Square One is a nursing home resident. All of us focus on that. We did this often at our campaign meetings when people would start arguing and say, who are we talking about? We're talking about individual nursing home residents. Let's focus on what they need. Among the issues on the table, staffing levels and training, patient assessments, inspections and penalties. It's simply a shifting of focus. What's best for the patients? Once you establish that, then you determine what is practical, what is feasible, what is politically possible to accomplish. The politically possible was establishing patients' rights and requiring a plan of care for each one of them. The resident assessment piece, in my mind, is the heart of the law. The fact that 
if you go into a nursing home to presumably live the rest of your life, you will be assessed to determine you know, what your condition is, you know, how is your skin care? Do you need to be handled in a certain way? Uh, what, are, what are your customary routines? Do you, do you like to take baths in the morning or do you like to take showers? And then once that's assessed, uh, the, the plan of care is to be developed by the nursing home and followed. Also politically possible, unannounced and intermittent inspections and penalties. All states are required to have uh, a series of particular remedies that they can impose as appropriate, such as civil money penalties, um, monitor, temporary management, a, a variety of remedies. You ready? And the politically possible was requiring aides who provide the bulk of care to residents to receive at least 75 hours of training. What was not politically possible was establishing a specific nurse-to-patient ratio and having a registered nurse on duty 24-7. The problem we had as an industry is not only did the government specify the nature of the product, it also determined what we would be paid for that product. And unfortunately, those were often not in sync. Uh, you might want X, but the government was only willing to pay for Y. Uh, my responsibilities as president of the trade association was to make sure that those two aspects did not get too far out of sync. In December of 1987, Congress passed the nursing home reform law as part of a larger budget bill, and shortly afterwards, President Reagan signed it. We were jubilant when it was signed. We, it was hard to believe that it could have happened so quickly. Implementing the law took longer than drafting and passing it. The administration worked slowly, and the industry worked to weaken the inspection piece. B2. In the years since, the promise of the legislation has been met in some, but certainly not every way. At least residents know that they have rights now. We have residents' rights. Residents have rights to make decisions about when they get up in the morning, when they go to bed, what they eat. That wasn't true 20 years ago. So for daily life activities, it's better. We're now monitoring clinical care in nursing homes, which we weren't doing before the mid-90s. Still, 20 years later, serious problems persist. Nursing homes now house the sickest of the sick, placing greater demands on too few nurses and aides. We call them nursing homes because we expect patients to be able to get the nursing care that they need. There's not enough good staff in a facility to do the ideal assessment or a, even a good assessment. I talk to many family members still in nursing homes who don't even know what it is. The difficulty we have is that when we compete with the hospitals for an RN or for an aide, especially nurses' aides, we're probably uh, two to three bucks less an hour for a nurse's aide. Two reports point to other persistent problems. In 2006, University of California researchers identified ongoing problems nationally in nursing homes participating in Medicaid and Medicare. State inspectors cited 30 percent of the homes for deficiencies in quality of care and 20 percent for deficiencies in the prevention of pressure sores and incontinence care. In early 2007, the Government Accountability Office found that while fewer sanctions were issued by the government, homes with chronic problems cycle in and out of compliance. Facilities fix just enough to come into compliance at the next survey or at the revisit survey, but a year later, um, the same problem again. Or a few months later, there's a complaint with the same problem again. So they're not maintaining compliance. They're doing enough to get by, but they're not really sustaining compliance. There is no positive incentive in the system that's out there. It's always do a better job, and then when we find something, let, then let us know how you can improve it, and we'll check on that. There's never a positive incentive in, in this, kind of, this kind of a system. 